in sports entertainment. Pro wrestling talk from the four corners of parts unknown. This is That Wrestling Podcast. Welcome to That Wrestling Podcast. So let's just get this out of the way. Jason, I'm going to mute myself right now. Your victory speech for your correct prediction of Warriors and Six. The floor is yours. First off, I have to thank my parents. Without them, I would never have been able to see TV, to see an NBA game, and therefore... In 1994, when I graduated high school, I, I was a fan of the Golden State Warriors. I have photos to prove it. Not going to show that here because, Brian, you're not worth it. Uh, you know, at least you showed up this week, unlike the Celtics in games five and six. Oh, shit. <laughs> I stole that from Joe. That was my I'll line. Give you your credit. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Warriors in six. And, Brian, as we're recording this, the NBA draft is on. And I don't know if you saw who the Kings selected, but they passed up a surefire all-star for a maybe guy from Iowa. <laughs> yeah, Which is I awesome mean, because that surefire Pistons. all-star got yeah. Pistons. Yeah. now on the Pistons <laughs> with Cade. Joe, does that mean you're going to watch an NBA game? I don't get uh, Bally Sports oh. in here. So I don't get to watch the Pistons or the Red Wings. Nothing worth watching, but <laughs> wow. yeah, live in Ohio, so who cares? Yeah, it's it's you know the, the the Kings fans when they know that they do these moves, they call them the Kangs, and so <laughs> th- this seems like this is a Kang move. But hey, it's the draft, and didn't Jason uh, we'll Jones have something on Twitter of like you know Kings picks <laughs> Did you versus see the very next pick? So oh, I hope that, that turns him? out again. God. Yeah, yeah, Luka, I think he, he found it Clay from somebody. Thompson. Yeah, Chris Lillard. Stops. Yeah, yeah they found oh. yeah. everybody. Oh, brutal, brutal. Jimmer brutal. Fernet was supposed to be the next big thing. <laughs> Jimmer <laughs> Fernet, killer. <laughs> big white. Yeah, oh. there's a there's a whole lot of uh, bad bad decisions. And I was so and bummed when the Pistons got the fifth pick and the Kings had it in number four. I'm like, come on, yeah. but. And well, the Lakers to bought a pick in the second round today. Hey. So. <laughs> money, money. That was that draft podcast. Brought yeah. to you by. <laughs> next draft week, we'll, Kings. Have, <laughs> we'll have whoa, John, next week to give us the breakdown <laughs> of all the selections. Uh, before uh, we do get to what are you wearing? <laughs> uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were just kind of throwing it out there randomly and casually. We started talking about upcoming birthdays. And Joe, you had your birthday whoa. on Tuesday. Yeah. 61. Yes, I did. Happy Looked birthday. Great. 61 have- years old. Yes, it was a uh, <laughs> <laughs> little snow on the mo- mountaintop. As I Joe like actually say. bought a little. us beer. Yeah. Jo- Joe actually was the one that bought us beer 20 years ago when we couldn't, oh my God. you know, weren't able to get in. So <laughs> I, I had, I had to look out. It was the only way I had friends. We listen, we got, uh, listeners, we, we tease, but we all, you know, wish Joe a happy birthday. We all texted him. Happy birthday. Uh, even for, me. Yeah. Even, even Jason, even crazy Jay. Uh, <laughs> Gave gave him the the birthday love and uh, you know we, we definitely appreciate all that you do for the show. But there's also someone else who does want to wish you a oh. happy birthday. As oh, well. I don't even we're, know what this is. We're gonna see. Oh, geez. So we can pull that up right now. Oh, hello. My name is Lanny Poffo, formerly the genius of nice. WWE, <laughs> and here I am in the city. If you can hear the beeping of the horns, I'm in Quito, Ecuador. It should come as no surprise to you. It is the capital of Ecuador, and I'm right in the middle of the city. Surprise to Joe. Birthday, June the 21st. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> I'm not sure. Does he uh, not know how this works? I don't think he um, does. He's a teacher, so he says he is smarter than you uh, to his friends. Well, uh, I have to go along with that because uh, I can get anything I want because of my high school diploma. And I started wrestling, <laughs> graduated high school in 73, started wrestling immediately in June of 73, and uh, it was a 21-year career. So um, let me start with, uh, since Macho Man is your all-time favorite, let me give the most... Um, Famous poem I've ever done for him. Hall of Fame one. Um, I stand oh. before the Hall of Fame in honor of my brother, 
who seized each carpe diem day with passion like no other. Born Randy Mario Poffo, he became the macho man. Randy Savage made it cool to be a wrestling fan. His match with Ricky Steamboat in 1987 was on a scale of one to 10, much better than 11. He snapped into a Slim Jim with his iconic voice. He earned a role in Spider-Man, which made his fans rejoice. When the mega powers exploded, the storyline was real. Life's too short to hold a grudge. It's time for us to heal. In triumphant jubilation, we celebrate his name. Finally, the Macho Man is in the Hall of Fame. Thank you. What the fuck? And I'm going to take my... You don't remember that? Uh, I thought it was Panama your birthday. And I'm going to find a little messy here. Put it back but, on. Um, let me just say this. Uh, like Joe's here. Brian, <laughs> Jason, Kevin, and that Wrestling Show podcast, thank you for oh, choosing me to do this. And um, I really don't have any interaction with the fans anymore. Except for uh, my cameo. So I appreciate it very much. And I would like to say... Happy birthday to you. <laughs> birthday wishes by the score. We wish you a happy birthday and many, many more. That's so, a remix. Joe, the mix thank you very the much. Have a Christmas. great birthday. I think it's tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, you should be on uh, summer vacation, I guess. So uh, it doesn't mm -hmm. say here where you're from. I'm from oh. Chicago. And um, <laughs> living in Quito, Ecuador. <laughs> Can you believe what it? What is I always, this? Read about the land of eternal springtime. <laughs> is that the and here it is, 48 degrees. So no low, surprise. 68 capital. degrees high every single day. What? And Fuck. it's uh, fresco, not frio. Okay. Have a good day. Good thank enough. you so much, and thank you for choosing me. Hey, Lanny Poffo, ladies. Wow. And All right, um, um, Brian. Thank you for that because it's like you know the closest thing I could get to the Macho Man is his brother so i appreciate that one and is his genius like me that's what i so, thought buddy yeah i did have a macho man shirt on it uh earlier but i was doing a lot of work around the house and i was like i sweated through it and it stuck so bad that i had to change you so know what's that, interesting what's interesting about that cameo brian i can't believe you wrote all of that <laughs> yeah, there, there's a character limit but somehow i, I squeezed it all in unreal um, i got a happy feeling... birthday joe Thank yeah. you very much. That wrestling show podcast is the yeah. name of the show. <laughs> if the genius says so, then it's true. It must be. Yeah, I, I got a feeling. Just like we uh, we we say for Bret Hart, the uh, uh, keep rocking. Uh, <laughs> I, I, think, I think Lanny's will be Fresco, not Frio. Uh, fresco, not Frio, and that wrestling show podcast. Yes. All right. Uh, so, how, Brian? Your birthday is next week yes yeah it's coming it's coming let's, let's get to work and then jason you're at the end of the month you're next month a uh, week after that yeah. No, yeah yeah 13th yeah oh crap all right get those cameos fire up those cameos ladies. buy the merch we need the help oh. well speaking of frio. the merch let's let's the frio the frio <laughs> Not fresco, not for you. Um, all right. Yes, <laughs> merchandise it is. It's what are you wearing? What are you wearing? What are you wearing? What are you wearing today, today? What are you wearing? What are you wearing? What are you wearing today? All right. And Joe, yeah, you were on the wavelength. And I, that's exactly why I did that. Having the Macho Man shirt on the one that you gave me uh, for Christmas. So uh, that's my, my little tribute to you, along with the Lanny Poffo shout out there. Uh, so what are you wearing, Joe? You, you said what you're not wearing. Well, earlier I had the Mega Powers Exploding Garbage Pail Kids shirt. But again, I worked in it all day and I'm like, oh, it's stunk. So in honor of the 26th anniversary of the Austin 316 promo, I'm going with the Ringmaster. Very nice. Very nice. And Kev. Yeah, you were basically before the promo. I am after the promo. I am sporting the Austin 316 classic black and white. I was looking through the closet. And I was like, what do I wear? Pushed on the hangers. I'm like, it chose it for me. Yeah, 26, right there. 26 years ago, day of recording. It's crazy. Yep, the iconic promo. Jay, what what will Nick Jackson be wearing next week <laughs> yeah. that you are wearing tonight? <laughs> yeah, that was kind of fun. You know, he, uh, <laughs> you know, it's funny. When I was in wrestling school last year, I started wearing those 
jumper sex. And I'm like, this will be my wrestling thing if I decide to pursue, you know, being a manager or a commentator. And then the uh, Young Bucks started doing it. It took a year, but Nick was wearing on Dynamite this past week, one that I have. Go to our social media at that WrestleBot. Yep. You can see um, the proof that, you know, we wear the same things. Now, uh, if that is the trend, next week he'll be wearing the Brock Lesnar back tattoo skull t-shirt uh, from wwe shop uh, of course you're go you're about to hear how awesome and excited i am for the SummerSlam main event we'll get whereas to brian yep. not so much so uh i'm wearing the brock skull t-shirt let's go so quick <laughs> well before we get to that we'll, we'll do a quick update obviously the big story last week was uh, this lawsuit or, or everything with going on the investigation with Vince McMahon. And then uh, all the shit hit the fan on Friday, <laughs> right? The day after oh, we God. recorded, it was like, what? Vince has temporarily stepped down. What? Stephanie is interim CEO. What? Mr. McMahon is speaking on SmackDown Friday night. So everybody's going nuts. Uh, we fast forward to SmackDown. You also what happened. Uh, <laughs> Joe, Joe and Jason were planning an emergency reaction podcast. Yes. And all we basically got was then now forever together. And then on Monday, Vince comes out. He wasn't even announced. He says, hey, John Cena's back next week. He leaves. <laughs> Meanwhile, behind the scenes, John Laurinaitis has been put on leave. The investigation, I guess, goes on. Uh, guy, is there anything anybody wants to add to any of this? It just, we're just I taking it day by day, it. I think. I love it. Vince is under the gun. And he's just putting his balls out there, man. The, the balls and sides of grapefruits. Putting it out there. Showing up on TV when he is the subject of an investigation. Uh, we didn't know what was going to happen on Friday. And that is the, the genesis of Joe's, the Celtics didn't show up joke. Because uh, I was going to make a joke about how we were going to do it a podcast, but Joe didn't show up. And then Joe would have said... Just like Brian, just like the Brian and the Celtics in game six... They didn't show yeah. up either. Yeah, so uh, I am, I, I mean, look, I'm at the point where I don't know if I should care about anything other than what the TV product is. And this isn't just Vince. This is like an epiphany, like a, um, like a, like a, a mind-opening epiphany experience, the sun coming down. I, I just want to care about what's on TV. Is that kayfabe only, Brian? Yeah, I guess that would qualify. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Maybe I'm living the kayfabe only life from now okay. on. Okay, an interesting angle. Okay. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. That's yeah. what uh, I'm getting out of that one, Jason. <laughs> Let me guess. <laughs> Never seen it. The no clue what you're oh, talking about. Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. Come on. Oh, no, I have seen Wizard of Oz with okay. the sound off listening to Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. That's, that's fun. That's fun. They totally sober. sync up. Oh. Mm -hmm. Did it sober? Oh, you have to start after like the third line roar. The third roar, yeah. yeah. The third Pretty roar. Cool. That's some memories. Yeah. Um, Cab Joe, anything else to add on Vince wackiness? No. Nah. Uh, I, I thought we've I thought, talked longer about it than yeah, Vince has. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, th I thought then now forever together. I was like, maybe that's his goodbye. Maybe, maybe we're oh. not. And then he pops up on Monday and say, Hey, John Cena's next week. See you later. I'm waiting, I'm waiting so, for him to be the main event know. of raw next week going, just remember Ms. And Mrs. Is next. <laughs> I, oh, I, that I, would be great. I, no I will, chance. I will, I will say this. Yeah. Kudos to Steph for being CEO. I think, I think it's, it's great. I don't know if we're going to touch too much on it, but great for Triple H now going back to the Performance Center announced earlier when he's back and he just said, he's back. I'm back, which is which is awesome, which is fantastic. So kudos to them, too. If they're the faces, right, Triple H going back to the Performance Center more, Steph being CEO, not just temporarily, maybe a, maybe a long term gig. Uh, hey, can, kudos to her. I, I like it because uh, Mickey James wrote on social media like, "Hey, about time! You're gonna do great." A lot of a lot of good interactions. So it was a good positive spin from kind of a crappy crappy situation. But hey, yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Time time will tell. Um, but yeah, it, definitely some crazy changes happening right now. 
Um, in actual SmackDown wrestling, uh, we had Riddle and Roman in the main event. And uh, if Riddle lost, he no longer could challenge for the title while Roman uh, is the champ. Roman does win. Fantastic match. You know, it, the crowd was into it. Couple of good false finishes, like the the RKO off the spear. Really good stuff. But uh, but Roman does win. Great, great spear for the, the victory. Uh, he cuts a promo saying there's no one left. Here comes Brock Lesnar. We get the stare down, the F5, and then the announcement that it'll be Brock challenging Roman at SummerSlam. So so WWE, they pull the Brock card, you know, likely due to the injuries to Randy, maybe Kofi. There's the chair. Ooh, nice. Jay's the SummerSlam chair. It. You gotta get the safe <laughs> summer slant chair. Um, yeah, Jay, Jay, you and I, we got a little little Twitter back and forth on this. Are are you still clearly you're still all for this happening, right? Oh, you're goddamn right. I'm <laughs> all for this. I've seen Brock versus Roman at two WrestleManias live. I'll see it a third time at SummerSlam. I have a feeling I've seen it another time live too, but man, look, they've got to sell out a stadium. Brock sells tickets. Brock gets ratings. And yeah, Roman's promo was great. However, the one thing that I would have liked to have seen for like a week, when they shook hands, they would have embraced. Have a two-man power trip. That'd be fun. You know, that would have been great. But, you know, they need the rivalry to, to build for that match. But goddamn. When I saw it was Brock, I, I i mean, obviously I got the shirt. I am ready. I am so ready for this. Kev, are you so yeah. ready for this or are you not I, ready? <laughs> I, I'll, I'll say this. I'm not ready. Jane, Jane and I were at SummerSlam <laughs> last year. The pop was huge. Yeah. yeah. The pop was huge. We, we saw, you know, he, he competed. Uh, Roman versus Cena. Roman got such a huge pop. That, that match is just going to build itself and it's and it's kind of different because it's going to be the last man standing. So it's not like it's just a simple pinfall. You know, they may come to our seats. That's what I mean. They could they they could go all over. Who knows? It's yeah. going to be it's it's going to be uh, kind of a different flavor. Is it a little stale? It's not totally fresh, but I'm not down on it. I, I I'm not down on it. It's like the Baker's dozen donuts when like. They're available the next day, but they were from the day prior. Yeah, is that, was that good? Is that a good analogy for, for what you're saying, Kevin? Yeah, I mean, like they still day good. Old, like day, day old, old donuts, day old yeah. bread at uh, Jimmy John's. It's like fifty cents yeah. when I was in college. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I just everything you guys are saying is true. I don't disagree with the the logic of the business, the potential for the match to be fun, all of that. I am just done. With them together. I'm done. I, I thought WrestleMania was a great send off this past time. And let's move on. Let's do something else. So, yeah, come SummerSlam. Sure, I'll probably be five beers deep and I'll be screaming my head off for both guys. I, I'm excited for all of that still. But up until then, I am very skeptical. Skeptical. Wow, very skeptical. Are you five beers in that now? too? <laughs> there we go. This is vodka. Um, but um, <laughs> no, I just yeah, I'm not excited for the build. I like did it in this last run for Mania. Like Brock had a forklift and took it through the car with them in it and flipped it. Like what more could they possibly do? Because they're not going to wrestle. You know, you could even do let's say if it was Orton, you could do like Orton and Riddle versus the Usos and, and him at ring size. Like they're, they're Brock won't wrestle. Roman won't wrestle. So I'm just not excited for it. I'm well, open the for them to prove me is, wrong. Look, the storyline is written itself. Roman took Brock's title at WrestleMania. He's back for his title, which could lead to the, to the split of the titles, which totally defeats the whole point of doing it. I understand that, but Come on, like this yeah. is this is this is awesome. I've I've that was an old uh we're get, we'll get to John Cena in a little bit, but that was an old like Cena phrase is like you know, we've seen enough, right? That's yeah. that's, that's what I'm applying Never. uh to this one. Uh Joe, what uh, your your take on this Brock and uh Roman fun? I feel like I've said this in past shows, so roll the tape. <laughs> what? It's this. 
where who cares world? who cares it's not that big of a thing like who cares if brock lesnar won the royal rumble he didn't hey, need to gonna, i don't feel no he didn't i don't blame re- brock Let we're me gonna rewind first. i don't blame brock for this Brock has been amazing since he came back from SummerSlam. Okay? I'm sure he's appreciative. I, I know he is. He's, he's just like, thanks. And then he's giving me a thumbs up. Thanks, Joe. And he said, Joe who? Because I was mad at the In time. the moment, yeah. And it wasn't I was mad. It was a matter of I was it's annoyed. Look at my beard. It was so predictable. Look, Amish. <laughs> You've got mail. What the fuck All is right. this? <laughs> Big camcorder's on right now. Uh, let's just say Roman and Brock, it was fresh a while ago, but this seems like it's going to be going on for life. So, uh, yeah, let's just see how that one plays out. I, I'm so confused at what I'm saying right now. You can explain it for the people listening silent. silent oh, yeah, because that's right. The listeners aren't going to get it. You're going to have to watch this on YouTube, uh, where we now have 60 subscribers. That's awesome. I think that, sum- I think that summed it up. But I'm just impressed that I used to be a hat guy, apparently, back in the day. <laughs> I was surprised. I thought maybe you were like a 50s like news reporter. You know, no, that was, my gr- that was my grandpa's hat <laughs> from like uh, the 50s. That was that was so good. It, it took me like half a second to get where you were going with it, but I totally got it and went, "Wow!" Oh, Joe, Fine you work. made that? Yeah, I made that today. Uh, Jess, uh, my wife was at work and I was bored, so I'm like, I read the rundown of today's show and I'm like, uh, I really don't have anything new to say. So what if I just did a flashback of everything and just kept going? All right, I guess we can move on then. That was uh, clearly we have a third member of the show with some video capabilities now. <laughs> this is opening up new possibilities. But yeah, I, I think Joe has summed it up as Roman and Brock uh, clearly fighting forever. So for life. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so, Sunday night uh, impact <laughs> wrestling. They celebrated 20 years of its history with its slam anniversary pay-per-view uh, by all accounts, a real good show. We don't really talk impact. It's on while we record. And frankly, there's just so much wrestling content that, you know, we just don't have time to properly cover it, but you know, 20 years, man, that's impressive. Um, that's longer than WCW. And how many times did it seem like TNA was about to go out of business and then something would happen with Dixie Carter? or Billy Corgan or Jeff Jarrett. Uh, but they're in a pretty good place now by all accounts, which is great. Um, guys, let's just throw out some favorite uh, moments from 20 years of TNA. I, I want to start with Kev because I know you have a, a personal one from being at the Compuware yeah. Arena. That That's the reason why. That's right. Well, it, it's, a, it's a lead up. So when uh, Kurt Angle left WWE at the time, was going to go rehab and, you know, then you see him sign with TNA. That was the first time I really ever watched anything. And then they were, yeah, coming to CompuWare Arena. Arena. And I'll say it right. Bound for glory. Thank you very much. I think uh, the, in the past. I remember I said, that. Yeah. I forgot what I said. But, yeah, the, he, he was the reason why I really wanted to go. And uh, Sting was there. Jarrett was there. Was, you know, now I look back, I'm like AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, like so many, so many amazing names. Uh, but yeah, did, that led to me buying a few $5 DVDs that are, that I've watched multiple times, just watching, watching the product and it's fun. I went to the 10th slam anniversary, which was in Dallas, Texas. Uh, the sting was there, uh, bully Ray against Chris Park, who was Abyss's oh, brother. Oh yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Christian <laughs> Cage came and accepted his uh, Impact Hall of Fame uh, induction. And then that is the, the weekend that I got to meet Hulk Hogan for the first time. Uh, oh. He came to the radio station I was working at in Dallas and uh, to do media. And it was, it was him and, and uh, Dixie Carter. So fucking fine, man. Uh, like The joke is I would eat food off her ass. Yeah, that's how hot wow. Dixie Carter was, is still to this day. Uh, the best part about that was I had, I was asked to escort them back to their car and we were in the elevator and Hulk Hogan looked at me and goes like that shirt, brother. 
and it just said jobber on it. I'm like, yeah, Hulk Hogan <laughs> called me brother. And, and, and I didn't know what to say. And I just said, thanks for coming in. Brother. Yeah. So, uh, that's good. But no, I've watched, a, I've watched, I've been a big fan of TNA impact over the years. I've got a ton of the merch shocker and, uh, you know, I'm glad they're still here. You yeah. know, I DVR mm-hmm. impact every week. Most of the time I just scan through, but they've got a great roster. They are the, uh, the lesser indie below a NDW. So it's a great product. And if you're not watching impact, you should Joe roll the tape. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, I never watched a lot of it, but there's two things that like when you came, when you brought this up, that came to mind, there were two wrestlers that basically were stagnant, but g- got a resurgence in impact TNA, whatever you want to call it. Number one, Joker sting was oh, the wow. best. Sting. That was a fun one. Yeah. It was that a fun was one. like, he was on, he was into it and it kind of gave him a little bit of a, I can still do this. He wasn't just playing the hits and broken Matt Hardy. Yeah. I was yeah, like, that, 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 those, like if it wasn't for impact, a place where these two guys could have like, you know, reinvented themselves, they didn't have AEW or WWE right. to do it. So I give them props for that. And did anyone watch uh, Jeff Jarrett's uh, Broken Skull Sessions? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. When Some he mentioned, I, w- I watched it today. When he mentioned that TNA was never supposed to be competing against WWE. They were just supposed to be an alternative. And it was when Anthem came in and then it changed to Impact where it got all like messy and all that stuff. Like I didn't know that he was actually he mentioned that he called Vince a couple times during yeah, that, that was run interesting. Yeah. And Vince would answer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. can you imagine yeah. if he would have bought the tape library, AJ styles, Samoa Joe, yeah. early CM punk had a lot to do with impact. Of course, all the Jeff Jarrett stuff. If you're ever looking for a good wrestling DVD to watch the TNA, Jeff Jarrett, King of the mountain DVD was so good. Now this came out, 2004 probably yeah oh it was so good so uh, and if impact you're plus is their streaming service and it has every pay-per-view every tv show it, it it's awesome they also have a channel on pluto tv which is a free streamer where oh, they okay. show uh, that. they show the asylum years is one of their shows Ooh. where they just show like the first nice. season the pay-per-view ones and they also show like recent uh pay-per-views things of that nature so i if you don't have impact plus check out pluto tv and they have an imp a channel specifically just for impact so i i also had down there yeah like the final deletion like that whole broken mat that was one that we all kind of watch and what like what the fuck is exactly and like exactly weren't, weren't feeling it and then like as it continued on it was like okay i i get it because it's just so out there um so yeah that was on my list too um there's just this one clip Did, have you guys ever seen this was in the early days of it was elix skipper it's, it's running just, off the cage yeah. and doing a fucking her i still watch that going like holy shit he didn't die that was incredible. Absolutely incredible. And, and uh, I never really liked, liked uh, Tanae and Don West, but boy, yeah. they, they, they love that moment. Don West. Just, there, there's a really good, uh, like, what the, what the hell is happening clip. Uh-huh. It's uh, 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 Paul Bear. What's Paul Bear's real name? Uh, Bill oh, Mooney. Moody. Moody. Bill- yeah. Moody he's in, yeah. He's in yeah. the ring with a valet. I think her name's Goldilocks in Tony Schiavone comes in there is this one like, when they try to do like a heel shivani yeah. Yeah, it's just like yeah. it's like what what is going on like if you if you he need mentioned that in, he mentioned that in his comic it's book uh, butts in the seats and he talked about it on the on uh what happened when his podcast with conrad he did not want to be a heel but they just kept being a fucking russo Vince Russo just pushing yeah we'll have to start that impact wrestling podcast soon because it sounds like we have a lot we could talk about, but unfortunately, we are on a bit of a time crunch. Uh, yeah. I am not your host, but we are. Uh, I am your official celebrity timekeeper this week. I, I would be <laughs> remiss though if I didn't mention Jay Lethal, Ric Flair, 
the the off. Yeah, My that was God. a good one. I'll watch that every I'll watch that every <laughs> month on the month. Yeah, just fantastic. Uh so yeah, let's move ahead to Raw. Um, the, the one thing I just needed to mention, because it was just, how are they going to deliver on this? Uh, the return of Elias and, and how that was going to play oh. out with Ezekiel. <laughs> you know, they had the backstage, Ezekiel and Elias is chatting. Elias's beard looks very healthy. I know yours did earlier awesome. too, Jay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so Elias, he comes out, he does the, the concert, KO interrupts, calls him a liar. Zeke's on the Tron. We got, we got guitar shots. Uh, we're going to get KO uh, next week against Ezekiel or Elias or his younger brother that we haven't met, Elrod, as, as uh, KO <laughs> puts this. So, <laughs> judging by the laughs, I think uh, we're all thinking this was a home run. It how we awesome. know this is a home run, my wife watched it and loved every second of it. And she knows nothing about the backstory. She <clears> knows <throat> who Elias is. But I said, hey, you got to come watch this. And she she loved it. It was uh, uh, so well done. I don't know where it's going to go. I mean, there was a funny thing I think I sent to the group. It's Ezekiel and Elias against Sami Zayn and El Generico. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so, That's so funny. Yeah. Uh, the other the other thing, guy or uh, um, I forget what I was going to say. So go ahead. With the someone I, else can talk. I mean, it was reminiscent to me if you guys remember back in the Attitude Era when Mankind and mm-hmm. Dude Love introduced Cactus Jack, like so to Triple I, H. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I think like, I posted that on a uh, Monday night when did you? that okay. video just going like this is just like, screams of that. Yeah. So that was fun, and I like to that just even the nuances that. Elias, he has a way of speaking when they were backstage. You know, he's just a little mm-hmm. more laid back. And and there's, you know, Ezekiel, like, uh, you know, we want to speak with Zeke. I can't, I'm so excited, right? It's like, what a cool, like, you know, those character nuances to see that play back and forth. I'm During glad it, they didn't. I'm glad they didn't have Sandow come back. And oh. That's the last thing. That's the last <laughs> yeah, thing I'll say. That. That's the last thing I'll say. I'm sorry. I I I, I feel like. I wanted to like pee my pants. It was so funny. Right. Uh, <laughs> but during, during when he, when, when Elias was in the ring, that nice beard, all I can think of is please let the beard stay on. Somehow. Right. Right. Please KO. Don't actually hit him hard. Like it was kind of protecting. Right. When he, when he gave the knee, like I was just like, please don't like get him down and start hitting. So it comes off a little bit. I'm sure they glued the crap out of there. Cause, cause you know, Ezekiel is like so clean shaven and it's like, I thought it was fantastic though. It felt organic. Like it felt, it felt like just so, so easy between them. I just kind of like Seth in Cody, right? I didn't want to see that end. I don't want to see KO and Ezekiel end because I don't necessarily, I'm not saying it's not going to be as good, but that is perfect. KO can work with anybody. But it was a perfect first, uh, uh, I'll say, opponent, and uh, I'll say I'll even say dance partner with KO because it just works so good. And we'll probably see something at SummerSlam. Wouldn't it be a that. duet? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 musical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun, man. It's fun, and and I think KO just really makes it with just his outlandishness, you know, for a liar. Yeah, I just like the whole thing is. <laughs> Why does he care so much? That's the real question. <laughs> he hates liars. No one he else liars. hates them. No one else cares. Like, what was oh. it last month when like Seth Rollins and Cody were looking at Ezekiel going like, I think they are different. No, they're yeah. he's lying. Yeah. Like, why does he care? <laughs> That's the real story is why hasn't Kevin Owens just moved on? He's doing the everyone's crazy except me. You have yep. to listen to me, bit. That's like I love that line of like, you may be fooling these people in Nebraska, but I'm French Canadian and I'm smart. <laughs> like, he's just sticking by his guns. Um, it's fun. It's fun. It's 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 you know, wrestling needs that now and again. It doesn't all have to be so serious. So that's that one's working just fine for me. Let's shift off to uh, AEW. So the AEW New Japan. Uh, forbidden door pay-per-views this Sunday and most of dynamite uh, was spent on finalizing the card. Um, 
I guess first off, but do I, I don't even think I need, do I need to run down the card? No, no, I won't just, know much of it anyway. They, they added, don't, they don't know it either. Yeah. No. They, wow. And that's hard the thing. subject to change. Yeah. That's yes. the thing. Like I'm talking about this with uh, Ryan, the barber who's, who's on his way to Chicago to go. And you know, AEW, their, their model is to have like a, what a pay-per-view every like three or four months. And this is the one time where they, they just had double or nothing. And here we are like three, four weeks later, they got another pay-per-view. So everything just feels rushed. It's new Japan guys, which I'm, you know, just like MJF said, I, I can't pretend that I know new Japan, right? Like I just, I, I know names, I see clips, but I don't know it. So I'm not in the know. It feels very weird to me. Do you guys feel similar? Yeah, it just, and everyone's getting injured and the car just keeps changing yeah. on both sides. It's, They've had some bad luck. Yep. I think it was a, I think it was an okay idea, but when you can't have all of the big names involved, that's the problem. It's like Sam Invasion 2001. Daniel Bryan should be there. Yeah. The Lucha Bros should be able to be there, but they're not. And that's the problem. But what my, I'm curious about, Will they split? If there's 10 matches, will five New Japan guys win and, and, and five AEW? Or will there be a, you know, I'm curious about that. Um, I don't know much about New Japan. I know a little. I was excited to see Okada. Yeah, that was the, a nice surprise on Wednesday. And that four-way is going to be a blast to watch. Mm -hmm. Jay White, Adam Cole, Hangman, and Okada. That's going to be a good match. I'm looking forward to that. I am going to buy the pay-per-view. Um, I will do a post-pay-per-view podcast. Um, I doubt any of you are going to buy it. It is at some movie theaters. You can join me, but uh, if current trends roll are the same for AEW, that thing's not going to end until about 3 a.m. for you guys. That's, yeah. that's crazy. Let, 2 a.m. Chicago this. time. Jay, you, yeah. might, you might be the only one who can answer. Is uh, uh, there women wrestlers no. in New Japan? No women. Okay. In, no was, women in New Japan. Okay. So yeah. there's so there's ten matches on the card or eleven because uh, that I, AEW I women's match is. I oh, I just said that for the example. I don't oh, know. Okay, okay. I don't. I don't know how many matches there. I have be, the card, Kev. I'll pull. They have I'll, to. They I won't have go to, over the names, but I'll get the. I think the big you. question is, Mo is Moxley guaranteed to win the AEW interim title? Yeah, I think so. I wonder if they let Tanahashi win to get back the Punk versus Tanahashi match that we were supposed to be getting. Um, yes, I don't I like, know how. I like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it works with visas and yeah. you know travel and everything. But um, so, so I'm seeing. Um, so was this nine, like NWO nine, Japan? Yeah, I'm seeing nine matches on the pay per view with one buy in match. So okay. that's, that's long, but it's not, I don't well, think it's let me too ask you scary. This. When, when is Wrestle Kingdom? January. How long is Punk going to be right. out? He, uh, I haven't heard. I haven't heard him. Because like, I, say, I, if, what if he, what if, what if Mox loses and then Punk goes and challenges interim versus interim at Wrestle Kingdom in January? Well, Tanahashi has said, we'll do this at Wrestle Kingdom. So I think we're going to okay. get that match anyway. Oh, uh, okay. I would just like to see if they they got the balls to, to, to do it. But that I think would be it's fun. A, yeah. A 99 to 1, you know, if we play our percentage game, 99 yeah. for Mox. He's obviously not going to be at Money in the Bank next week. So, uh, you know, I don't know who said that shit. Does um, anybody want to call their shot on the uh, the mystery opponent for Zack Sabre Jr., new uh, uh, the combat club member, apparently? Claudio. Uh, you th okay, Claudio. That's been rumored. Yep. Go ahead, Kevin. I've Cargano got uh, uh, mentioned another one. he's going to be in Chicago, but he's going to leave late afternoon. Uh, yeah, so that's what he says. That'd be, oh, really? that'd be, okay. that would be interesting. That would, that'd that's be what he cool. says, right? He could be so, long okay. shot. Yeah. Here I, comes the money. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes money. Now, now normally I'd go, Oh, come on. But you know, you're Mr. Warriors and six. So I, I kind of tip my hat and 
Say, hey, predictions, um, you're, you're on a, a little bit of a streak right now. Thing is, Brian I, Danielson has a relationship with him as well. They were former GMs together. Yep. And Claudio, oh who, as we as we know, was Cesaro. And those two finished strong together, too, on SmackDown. So, Well, well two other people that Danielson has a relationship with. The Bellas. Ray Wyatt. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's going to be Bree Mode at Forbidden Door. Uh, Br- <laughs> That's Bray the real Wyatt, Forbidden Door. I really feel like... If it's not Cesaro, it's going to be like Jonathan Grisham or Samoa Joe. Lost around. Yeah. Uh, but Excalibur said it's the newest member of the Blackpool Combat Club. So that's interesting as well. Mm-hmm. Danielson didn't say that, but he's a heel. He's not going to give us, uh, you know, they've, he came out the bad guy entrance. Yeah. Which is confusing because isn't Moxley a face? Yes. And they're and in the same Utah. group. Like, yeah. Do they even yeah, watch fair. their show? <laughs> <laughs> he did have a good promo, and, and the one nice thing. Oh, yeah. Him when and he took Christian. The, fantastic. I know. But uh, when he was like, I'm not giving this back, the microphone, I thought that was pretty good. The highlight, which uh, impact or dynamite was not good this week. So it was okay. The implosion of Jurassic Express. Christian's promo, heel Christian, so much better. Do you care? Do you care now? I told you. I'm I, intrigued I said it last by, week. I'm intrigued by the your dad would be proud, but he's deadline. I was like, was wild. Like was I, wild. I yelled at my TV. I was like, whoa. I love um, the line. I, I love the line where he said, "Try having a match that's more that's people remember after two weeks that they name that's a great events line. for." That's a yeah. great line. And they yeah. he, when when. I don't really know what the Luchasaurus thing's going to be. And especially when he said about, remember Marco? Like, did Christian kill Marco? Like, is that going to be the storyline? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Almost an 80 spit take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that, that promo got a lot of buzz. Um, you know, obviously that, that line of uh, <laughs> about your dad, that's, that's the one that you go, Ooh, but obviously I'm sure they're all professionals. It's been discussed and uh, yeah, it's good shit, man. It's good shit. I- uh, Kevin, hit the sounder. I've got breaking news. Um, I am no longer on a hard out. Hey, um, all right. Card card subject to change. Okay. Back to you, Brian. Thank you, sir. That's that's great stuff. Um, real quick, too, I did want to touch on um, Mox. Uh, he just did his pod with Renee, uh, and they go all into – um, the, his time in rehab and, and everything that came down to it. I didn't, I always saw like a little clip. I don't think has anybody got the chance to listen to it all. Not yet. Okay. Oh, you did. I listened oh, to it. Right. Yeah, right. I was doing work. This. I was doing yeah, work around the house do. and I don't have a job this yeah, summer. You're, you're, so. you're, you're yeah. turning out video. Who are you? You're, you're watching Jeff Jarrett podcast. <laughs> you got Who Lanny, are you? Lanny Poffo from Ecuador talking to you. It's about time you do something. And what a day. episodes in. Jeez. Yeah, it took a while. Uh, yeah, I listened to it and I thought the there was one thing that annoyed me, and it's like nothing against uh, Renee, but man, there are a lot of commercials on that podcast, and it's all the wow. same like COVID nineteen father and son uh, commercial that goes over and over again. When you listen Cow- to it, you'll hear it. Cowherds selling those ads, baby. Yeah, like good for them. Uh, we're brought to you by no one, but anyway, he does. <laughs> but mention- if you would like to sponsor this podcast, just send us an email at thatwrestlepod at gmail or. Uh, DM us on any of our social media at that wrestle pod. We would definitely like to talk to you if you're interested in sponsoring that wrestling podcast. We now bring you now. Uh, Moxley didn't hold anything back because he was just basically talking. Good. Nothing. It's not like he had anything planned. He was just like going, I was sick and tired of having the shakes. And it wasn't a and it wasn't a profound uh I'm gonna stop drinking because I have a daughter. It wasn't a profound, like, you know, my life is like spiraling out of control. And Renee even said, and it's not like I was pressuring him to do this. This was all him. He just randomly thought about it on like Halloween night. He's like, wow. I'm going to rehab. And then he went. And they took his phone away and he was okay with it. And when they <laughs> offered it, when they offered his phone back, he's like, nah. He gave a look and then he said, we can still keep it. He's like, okay. And he, he was grateful that he knew Renee's number because all he could use was a payphone. He's like, I don't oh, know. Wow. Yeah. And I got to give props to Eddie Kingston. 
it was just lightly mentioned, but he was checking in on Renee like daily. She said, like he's a true, like he's a true friend. This isn't a TV thing. So, yeah, he was very open and honest with it. He's drinking some non-alcoholic beer that he gets at Whole Foods, and he's like, I feel like Brian now, going to Whole Foods all the time. <laughs> um, That's good yeah, stuff. he he enjoyed that. He talked about the Forbidden Door too. But that's just listen to it. It's a good listen if you get past all the commercials. But was it her solo podcast or is it the one with Misha Tate on Sirius? It was her solo one. It was uh, okay. on iHeartRadio, the uh, okay. oral uh, session. Uh, no no session. longer oral. Session. Okay, got it. No longer oral. No oral on this. Just dropped. the sessions. Yeah. Yeah. I, once you, once you have a good. kid, you could drop the oral. <laughs> oh, just like in Brian, Brian and Kevin. <laughs> Uh, breaking is this breaking news boys <laughs> no, no it's not that, that that's been etched in stone since moses on the mountaintop of the ten commandments that's number 11 yeah we know that for real um there was a good speaking of the podcast too um eddie kingston did a great interview with the uh, mac mania Ring- ringer podcast i think i i don't know the the entire podcast i didn't listen to the entire podcast but i was 45 minutes into it and eddie was still just rolling about dmx and everything i mean yeah that's he's just the most authentic guy who's a wrestler who's still the, like you, you what you see is what you get he's it, so fantastic so that's another good one to, to to check out and very cool to hear that he's doing well on the other side uh getting back to Mox there all right so uh what did we get to we got uh the vin man again on monday night giving us that fantastic reminder in case can we, we- can we pause this? I want to talk about NXT. I don't know if this is just my new kayfabe only lifestyle, but I really came to the conclusion I love the characters. I love characters in pro wrestling. That would make sense. That NXT, with kayfabe only. <laughs> NXT is full of them. Uh, the D'Angelo family, Tiffany Stratton, Carmelo Hayes. I don't know if you saw the Chase U skit. With uh, Thea Hale moving into her dorm room, and Bodie is her roommate, and uh, it was such a good skit. Grayson Waller, Toxic Attraction, Roxanne Perez, and my guy, the one that I said could be the new Kevin Nash, Vaughn Wagner, is a badass. And I, like I said, I came to the conclusion Monday that I just want to care about the storylines. Kayfabe only NXT is full of it. And I love it. Love it. So um, I can't be the only one. I can't be the only one that is uh, trying to adopt a kayfabe only lifestyle. So, um, but did any of you watch NXT this week? Just I, I, I was asleep. Yeah, Happy was birthday busy. to me. He's busy, busy working on his video. Um, but um, <laughs> no, I, mean, I, I watched a little, but it goes back to my revelation that I had when LA Knight became uh, uh, Max Dupree, uh, that whatever I'm seeing here is going to be com- probably completely different on the main roster. So my investment just isn't the same. Well, you're why does it have you... to be the same? It's a different show. NXT's on Tuesday. SmackDown's on Friday. Raw's on Monday. Why does it have to because be the same? It, because if I'm enjoying this character and the storylines that they're a part of, I'd like to see it continue on. It's think about it like college athletics. You know, you're a basketball player playing in college. You go to the NBA, the drafts on tonight. They're not going to play soccer. They're it's the same sport, right? So let's just keep playing. Right. So instead of, okay, maybe that's not the best analogy because they're still wrestling, but it's still different. Right. I don't like like, all the changes. Do you like Mandy Rose? Sure. She's going to probably stay Mandy Rose when she goes back to the main roster. I'd hope so, but yeah, she's not gonna be. She's not gonna be Candy Dandelion. Like, <laughs> well, she was, is that but, in our five count of names? <laughs> but Kevin, uh, to go off that, she was already Mandy Rose before. No, on the I, main I agree. Yeah, yeah. No, they 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 did another one. They did a team Candy video uh, of a guy that he he was the cruiserweight champion from Ireland, Jordan. Oh, Devlin. Jordan. Yeah, and now, now he's JD. JD it's just another like okay, sure, right. So that's but why, like if, if it's. You can enjoy it. Enjoy it for yes. what it is, Jay. That's fine. That's fine. But but like the JD I can't McDonough get to that level because of you. I am because of me. No, no, no. Like like you, I should say. Excuse me. More choice. I, I don't know. Like I said, I I just 
I was just like enthralled or excited. And I was like, yeah, like I've turned a corner in my wrestling fandom. Okay. That's what it is boiled down to. It's an enlightenment. Epiphany. I like no. this positivity. The yes. Power. Yes. Well, that's now good. we can move on to John Cena. Okay. Yeah, he's he's back. He's coming to, of all places, Laredo, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> not Chicago. Not LA. Not, not, not Atlanta, Boston. Not Boston. Laredo, Texas. Uh, good luck with that. Um, Sweet yeah. in the huh? <laughs> Texas. <laughs> well, they got to sell tickets there too. They, so. Yeah, that's right. It's all all the same. All the ticket sales. So, uh, yeah. So we just had some fun. You know, he's back again. They're, they've been doing the twenty years of Cena all month of June. We're gonna have some fun right now with that with our <clears throat> live count for this week. That wrestling podcast presents the five count. And man, I, this was fun for me putting together. And I feel like I'm excited to hear all of yours because I'm sure your guys are going to have some that I'm like, oh man, yep, I could have replaced two of mine with those. And so good because 20 year, I mean, what a career. Uh, I want to go first because I yeah. know mine are going to be different than every one of yours. You Fair probably so. have like, you, you probably have like a top 100. You were like Cena's <laughs> number one fan. That's a notebook back out no, we're good. um number five i loved him sitting in the crowd at wrestlemania waiting for the undertaker was i good. was that was my first wrestlemania uh in my new house watching outside on the patio because it's 75 degrees here year round especially in march but i got really drunk so i didn't really remember much but i had to go back and watch uh number four the promo battles leading up to Cena versus Rock won. Thanks. Cena calling out Rock about everything, including writing promos on your hand. I love that. Um, WrestleMania 23 is my number three. John mm -hmm. Cena against his tag team championship partner, Shawn right. Michaels. You right. know, it's an old age old formula in WWE. You've got a big match coming at the pay per view. But they're thrown together as a tag team reluctantly, and they win the titles, and they're reluctant champs. And John Cena won in my favorite part. Young Kevin hated John Cena so much back then. It, it was so <laughs> mad with John that Cena. Hit my, that might be on my top five list. Who knows? World's worst wrestler, <laughs> WWE. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I still have the it. world's still worst, worst ever. That's what you had. Number two for me is uh, another. John Cena WrestleMania moment. You'd have thought he'd have been more prepared with that sign. In fact, he's walking out on the show. Like if you're uh, just listening, Kevin just decided, oh, I had a sign from 15 years ago. Let me go get it instead of having <laughs> it next to his desk. Yeah. Here's what's awesome. He, I don't even know if he listens to the podcast, or he, but like I can talk shit on him right now and he has no idea. I mean, no, I had the I Vader think. helmet right next to me and that just yes, came out he of was nowhere. So prepared, and that was a social clip that almost went viral and by almost i mean not it not even no one all. watched it <laughs> but it was one of those things that no one you know, watched it no, no. <laughs> wait hold on brian say it in three two one no, no one. one watched it no no no, no not <laughs> joe was supposed to say no but oh. whatever yeah brian um, yeah oh, so the thing broke kevin, <laughs> kevin was very sad that wrestlemania he doesn't know what I just said about him in the five minutes it took him to go get that sign. And uh, what is the sign, Kevin? Let's see it. For those watching on YouTube, worst wrestler ever, you John Cena. Thing this thing is 15 what? years old. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. 15 that years old. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about the sign when I go. Okay. Uh, number two for me was another WrestleMania moment that I was at WrestleMania 31. Kevin, you were there too at that one. Uh, John Cena against Bray Wyatt. It was a cool entrance for Bray because he had like the, the scarecrows. Um, what sucked is that it was in the daylight. So not the greatest entrance, but a fun match. I, I'm down for anything with Bray and, and John Cena. Number one, I've talked about it a million times on this show. 
Monday Night Raw, February 2014. John Cena against CM Punk. The winner gets oh, to go yeah. to WrestleMania against The Rock. I was in the second row. It was an amazing match. Go watch it. I loved every minute of it, and that is my number one. Sorry I took so long, but I didn't walk out for five minutes, and then one of us had to like waste time for that so person you, to come back. So you, you are up then, uh, Mr. Kev, because we need Perfect. to talk about the sign and anything else. I will. Uh, first, I'll talk about the sign. One, I made this over a, a, a midnight to 6 a.m. shift at Q106. <laughs> this is a heads up. So all of this, uh, I think I used about four rolls of tape and half a printer uh, in cartridge. That's, that's Let alone, half our budget. You this was the year, this was the time of Facebook. A person made me the Kevin K. Wall Cena hater of the month. Oh my gosh! <laughs> on, a, on a Slammy <laughs> Award, uh, just a couple of pictures of Cena. Oh, it says, uh, you think these stink? He's holding a pair of shoes. You should see me wrestle. Oh uh, how God. to wrestle for Cena. Uh, and then, of course, with the, the logo, WWE, worst wrestler ever, which actually leads into my, uh, this is like, I, I love that sign. My wife, she's always like, oh, what are you ever going to do with that? I'm like, you need oh, to frame it, it and put it up on that it's, wall behind. It's for moments like this. Yeah. Oh, good. Or at least have her prepared. That is a or be prepared idea. and have it in your room. So damn, uh, you should make no a video of framing it. <laughs> and you know what, Kevin? That reason alone is why overnight shifts don't exist anymore on radio stations. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Number you five. Use all of Mid Michigan Radio Group's tape. All, <laughs> all of their printer <laughs> ink. What the hell happened overnight? Yep. Uh, uh, all right, five. Kevin. Go ahead. We were we were both there. Uh, I I think this is this is the first time in a big event since I actually became a pretty good fan of Cena. Uh, over I'd say since I matured, uh, if, if you could say I've done that, just just cheering so loud for for Cena and Reigns last SummerSlam. I think both both of them. And I was like, I don't care who wins. I'm I'm pumped if if Cena wins. Sweet, that's awesome. Just him coming out. It's, Felt like a big, big match feel. Just felt really good. Uh, number four, uh, WrestleMania 36, uh, Firefly Funhouse match. Mm. Uh, it was just hilarious. Yeah, it was fantastic. That's, that's a good I, one. Just, just those little things, just like ruthless aggression. And like not the ruthless aggression thing is funny, but this just the play on it, him just, you know, over and over and over. It was just, it was hilarious. Uh, number three, not necessarily... So, Cena directly, but just the fun we had at B Dubs and and just cheering <laughs> John Cena sucks. Like just that was my that was at the the highlight where I'm like, please someone beat him. I a uh, big show. You got to beat him this time. And then it's like, or or Edge, come on Edge, come on, maybe you'll win. And then line him up, Cena knock him down. And then it just the hatred built more and more and more. Uh, number two, it's number two because this. I was a big fan of Edge, right? First ever winner of Money in the Bank. And I was at NCG Movie Theater, by the way, when they wow. showed pay-per-views for $5. It was wow. January 2006, New Year's Revolution. Uh, and yeah. that's when, you know, he cashed it in, beat him. And that's when he went on his nice little sexcapade with, uh, with Lita and boom. That's Isn't that more of an edge highlight, not a Cena one? <laughs> but 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 his list, he can see what okay. he wants. But I put I put it on there just for the fact where just I was I was happy to see him lose, and it was awesome. Uh, okay. Number one, I don't Great even story. have to explain it. This is when I started actually becoming a fan of Cena. That U.S. Open Challenge every week coming out there, I was actually like, okay, this guy doesn't have just five moves. Like he, he's throwing out 15, 20, 25 minute matches every Monday night. So he started doing that springboard so stunner. I know. Mm -hmm. doing yeah, that move. Yeah. yeah. But, it, but it, but it was like afterwards, I'm just like, okay, who's he going to, who's coming out next week? Uh, like that's when, and I remember I was in Bardstown, Kentucky. Uh, or I'm, I'm sorry. This is when we just moved from Bardstown, Kentucky to downtown Louisville. And that's, that is the city, which I became a Cena fan. And it's all because of that open challenge. Do you have any Cena shirts, Kevin? I don't. I don't. I like to be seen. <laughs> gotcha. That's a good five count. Joe, it is your birthday. Do you want to go last? Do you want to go next? 
I'll go what next. Was your this, two of mine were already mentioned, but why not? Let's go through well, it. Four days uh, ago. Number five, interrupting Elias's concert to bring back the Doctor of Thugonomics at WrestleMania. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, number four, the Firefly Funhouse match. And I put match in quotes because it wasn't a match. What was more impressive about that? I know, Kevin, you already mentioned, like, you know, how funny it was. They took nothing and made it something because of the WrestleMania with no fans. Right. Like, that probably was not the plan, but they made it like the cinematic match. That and the, uh, you know, the the graveyard match or whatever. Like, they made something. Like, the only two memorable things about that WrestleMania were those two and Titus's look at the end. (laughs) Number three. uh, This is kind of playing off of Jason's. But it's not WrestleMania 23. It was the rematch on Raw with HPK that was over an hour. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. That match was better. But, uh, yeah, that, that was like, you know, that was when I realized, like, maybe Cena can actually wrestle a match. Uh, number two, Jason, you already mentioned it. The year-long build with The Rock, the back-and-forth stuff. It was amazing. And I'm surprised this one wasn't mentioned. 2008 Royal Rumble return. That's when oh, we realized yeah. Cena was sure. not human. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cody might be trying to play that same game. He'll, he'll be back for money in the bank. But not in four months. <laughs> not in four months when it was supposed to be a year. I'm super Cena now. Uh, all right. Great list, guys. And, and most of mine are ones that have been said. Uh, yeah. My number five, the U.S. Open Challenge. That was when I was like, finally, you're out of the main event scene and, and having matches with Cesaro, Zack Ryder, KO, Sami Zayn. It's great, man. Loved watching every week. Uh, number four, um, the 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 feud with the Rock, but specifically, you mentioned it, Jay. The notes on your wrist. Whoa, I re- I rewatched that, and the Rock, as Cena says, he goes, he was shook up. He's just pacing back and forth, and then he t- takes that little wrist back. Just because I don't need a promo on my wrist, and he goes, nice tattoo, and the Rock just stops. <laughs> And he just walks right up and seeing his face while he continues the promo. That was the moment when I went, this guy can hang this guy. Cause I, before that I was like, Oh my God, rock's going to just tear this guy to shreds. That was fantastic. Uh, number three, I was there for the Cena versus AJ styles, Royal rumble, 2017 mm. hell of a match. And that was the last championship he won. That was the record tying 16th championship. We'll see if he gets to 17. I don't know, but that was my number three. Uh, my number two, also on your list, Jay. Yeah, being the fan at Mania for that match with the Undertaker, and I, I love that how they they built it up the whole time, and that yeah, he was literally in the crowd, and there's like videos of him just taking selfies with people, <laughs> like the biggest company star, and he was literally in the crowd. It was so well done. I absolutely loved it. I love that at the end of I think it was Charlotte and Oscar. And I think Charlotte's celebrating and you just see this ref come down the fucking ramp and like, you know, you can't hear him too well, but he basically is saying Undertaker is here and Cena gets out of the seat and runs <laughs> to the back to put his gear on. It was so great. Love that. So that's number, number two. My number one, no one did say this. Do you guys remember seeing the uh, John Cena cricket commercial? Where he was reading letters from fans. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Remember that? And fans? he only oh, like he jumped through the paper. Through. Well, no, no, not that one. That there's that one. The one where he great. got emotional. It's the reverse one. Yes. Yeah. It's it's the he's reading letters from fans, and then those fans come from behind the curtain and say like, oh, "I wrote that letter." Okay. And yeah, he's damn near in tears. He's hugging all the guys. I think I they maybe just said that on Raw. Like he's granted. What six hundred fifty make a wish moments? Unreal. Jay, you said the story about uh, the guy that he traveled across uh, to Ukraine, you know, Europe. Yeah, to yeah, Ukraine. Like it's all insane. You, know, it, you see those, and you just think of the line: "We don't deserve John Cena." It, you know what a guy that that cricket commercial was the one for me that I'm just like, God damn, you are too good of a dude. I can't hate you anymore. Just right. remember, He's a good actor. when it comes to John He's a good Cena, actor. be a work in progress. Look at that. I don't, I don't have anything John Cena handy. So, um, and this one, you don't have your sign from 20 years ago? What sign? <laughs> Jay- wow. Ooh. Look at that. Look at that. Looks like the Undertaker symbol. <laughs> see, see uh, Kevin, that's how you have stuff prepared Ooh, in the room burn. right next to you. Burn. 
my God. Great nice five topics. counts, everybody. Great yes. five counts. <laughs> Who made your five count? Let us know on social media using the hashtag TWP five count. All right, that'll do it for this week's show. Hey, next week, Joe and oh. I will be. Oh. Sorry to cut you off. I'm going to let you do your thing. It's got to say, we lost two famous referees this week, Tim yes, White and yeah, Dave Hepner. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, both men passed away. Uh, Tim White was notorious for those, the death of Tim White videos that they were trying to do during the Attitude Era. And then uh, Dave Hepner, of course, was the referee that had the plastic surgery paid for by the million dollar man Ted DiBiase that allowed Andre to win the title, yep. sell it to Ted during Saturday night's main event. Rest in peace, guys. We don't really do that enough. I mean, we, we lose people quite a bit in wrestling. So uh, just wanted to acknowledge them. Yep. Um, you know, Brian, you can go ahead and uh, close the show. A worthy, worthy interruption. Yeah. The, both those guys were made their marks in the wrestling business. Um Excuse me. Yes, I was saying next week at yeah, Joe and I will be attending AEW Dynamite with Blood and Guts. So we'll do a guts. full recap uh, of our experience for that. I'll be in, um, I'll be in Vegas. Jay will be going to Vegas. I, uh, I might. I might. Location. Yeah. I might drink my first oh drinks in my. 10 weeks. So uh, got the penthouse at the MGM. So it's going to be oh. hopefully a great view oh behind my. me instead of this great wall here. So. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll be in my living room. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. So, yeah, next week's going to be a, a fun show. Um, I'd like to put this out there right now, and I, I think I said this casually in, in the text. And, Jay, you mentioned it earlier. The YouTube, the subscribers are just going through the roof. I think I, I last check, I think I saw 64. I'm putting it Ooh. out there. So this is just for all of our listeners. It's for all of us, too, to help promote it. We need to get to... 100 YouTube subscribers by the end of Saturday, July 30th, the night of SummerSlam. Okay. I guess that's 64. We got to get 36 more in about a little over a month. A, month. a little over a month. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm setting that goal for us. And, uh, and, he, and here's the thing if you don't understand why we're just saying 100, when you sign up for a YouTube account, you don't get to customize your URL until you get 100 subscribers. And look, we, we, we pushed hard early, didn't really work. Um, you know, we're putting extra videos out, uh, extra podcast videos that some yeah. of us are doing. And, you know, it's, you know, we just, it's it, something we did for fun. I was explaining this to one of the guys I work with today. We started doing this podcast during the pandemic because it was just a reason for us to get together. Uh, normally drink way too much and just talk about shit. Then it turned into wrestling. And here we are. So uh, we're yeah. just doing it for fun. We're not trying to make millions. Uh, we got a t-shirt store at whatamaneuver.net. Just yeah. search that wrestling podcast. But tell your friends, subscribe, help us get to 100. Because, uh, I, I, I mean, it's to me, I'm blown away that every time I look, the, the numbers go up. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm floored by because I don't know how to do videos. I'm teaching myself. You know, this is all Brian's ideas. Like, we should put the show on YouTube. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so, yeah. and then we found out this week, Joe knows how to do video too. Look at that. I've known, yeah. I've known for, I've known for years how to do videos. I well, just do, them, for, I do, uh, I do them for school. I don't do it. Podcast. <laughs> I did. Well, now that uh, I have time, well, Joe, we wanted, Joe is waiting to show his skills during promo mania. But remember that guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. We didn't well, get to it do wasn't that. promo mania. It was fucking being the elite. They were skits, which we could go back. <laughs> and uh, the wheel, yes. the wheel never picked me, that and damn I was like, "Wheel, uh, yeah, I was, yeah." So uh, yeah. I guess the video that I made for this week will probably be popping up on YouTube uh, shortly. So yeah. maybe a Twippy Award winner, who knows? Yeah, jo- Joe's got about two and a half months of great content coming. <laughs> this, is the, this is me. This is me in the crowd before the school year begins. All right, we got to wrap this up because I do got to get. I got to get rolling here. So uh, all right, thank you everybody for subscribing. It's really awesome. Yeah, onward and upward at that wrestle pod again for all the socials. We will talk to you next week. Enjoy wrestling. Thanks for listening. Follow that wrestle pod on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. One, two, three, that's it. <laughs>